then that's the proof that it worked, isn't it? If we take a field which is infested with uh, insects and we use radionics and they go away and statistically we count and we show and we prove that they went away, then we can show by normal scientific means of control experiments mm -hmm. that it went away. And this mm -hmm. is what interests me. I don't want to live in a fantasy of... of now, you're a, pr a practitioner of this little bit esoteric uh, way of healing. Do you think artists, painters, uh, sculptures, have a another way into the form of matter, this energy that comes with form and... and, and do they address the same world, in a way? Wait a minute, I'm thinking. Well, while he's thinking, I think we're going to invite Walter van Uhl, who is an artist, to talk with Nick Franks about radionics, because Walter van Uhl is a painter, but he has used, and he has used like layers of gold, and he went to places like Tibet and China to get inspired, and he believes that his paintings have a, another form and another power than what we see, than with me the eyes. So, I'll let you talk with him. Okay, when you go, Walter, when you when you when you create a painting or a picture, how do you get your idea? Where does yeah. the idea come from? Yeah, that that's the meaning. Um, I think it's not coming. That's an easy question answering. Where it's not coming from? It's not coming from my heart, huh? My feelings, emotional. It's not coming. I found it from my intellectual way of thinking. It's not coming because of my father was uh, be, uh, kicking me or something like that. Where it is it coming from? It is a question of uh, having a different awareness of being. So we call it, if you take a little bit from intellectual thinking, just a little bit, I forget everything. Then you take a lot of intuitive thinking. If you take these two together, you get creative thinking. And what is interesting with that kind of thinking, it's a new awareness. So the input is not coming, coming longer from down or from left side or that side, but the incoming the input is coming from above, we say. So, Walter is not longer uh, so much there. And we are coming in contact, very sensitive, with this feeling that uh, maybe the field from Jung, he called it in Archetype different words, maybe Sheldrake, but all we say, hey, hello, there's something. There is a field of energy with information, and that information is coming to me now. I'm, Walter is not longer talking, but the field itself goes through you, and it's coming out. And if we are looking to that, then we are maybe on the same field, because I felt that if you will paint because of your father was doing that, or because of the war there, or because of this is catharsis. ideas. It is catharsis. It, yeah, but that, that is not clean energy then. Okay. But because you will put it in there. And if you get it from upside, it will be clean energy. Just a little bit dirty from Walter. So I found we have uh, also responsibility for energy, not only for the air and for the water, but also, for example, for the energy from a painting. Because we are energy, the painting itself is energy, and with the speed of the light, it influences each other. And so I do hope that from different points of view, your point of view, Peter's point of view, and my point of view, that we come together because we are feeling, we are talking about the same things. And I, I, I think it's necessary 
that we do not operate longer separated and that we we put all these information together because then well you come out and people will hear it and know it and one more thing and then I will keep quiet <laughs> uh, I just came from a, a journey and I met a very interesting anthropologue and I was telling about my secret world yes going into there because as, as I always say I visited I visit that world and secret information is coming and in the spiritual way it's your secret fingerprint from that world and you cannot get it away but he heard me thinking about a lot of things and then he told me well that's exactly the same thing Vanuatu people Mm -hmm. in, the, in, in, in uh, Polynesia or something are talking about they are they're thinking the same way and then we talked about the Koki people in Colombia the Koki people who felt themselves for 400 years oh, Kogi, yes. the Kogi eh, felt themselves responsible for this whole world and this energy and then he told me and I think that's a good idea that even the 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 the, the, the priest from the one from the Koki and from the Vanuatu who has uh, survived with this secret knowledge, they are specialized in it. We are going from a different point of view now, new <laughs> into it. Uh, that these two chiefs are very interested to hear about each other. Because they want to know, do they think about the secret world of energy just like we? And I think it's very interesting and even necessary in coming age, that, that, that in coming century, that we uh, share this knowledge together and that we bring the Pope and you and this Vanuatu people Maybe and that people Pope. together. Neymar, you, you know what I mean? The, so. so and then I heard some message, hmm, I like even more. My friend had uh, a specialist, a Nobel Prize winner, who is uh, a specialist in uh, brain waves, ne neuro how do you call it? Neuro ne neurology from the brain. Yeah? Neurology from the brain. Neuro and, ha and he told neurology. me, he told me that he, they already have proved at this time that only by taking a thought in your mind you can not only heal yourself a lot of people uh, know that but you can even reconstruct things who are uh, uh, damaged they say hey hello you can influence yourself no no we can rebuild our, 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 our whole body so they found it already, but they cannot talk within 25 years about it because they will retire all money for searching that. Mm. And I think people like that, like you and me, must share knowledge together, maybe by email, and then bring out it even together. And then it will go quicker and quicker that, that a lot of people can, well, be successful with your method or be successful with that. Well, we, you have to understand that what what a radionic practitioner does, although it draws on certain levels of energy, it nevertheless is a highly disciplined method. We're, we're not creating paintings or yeah. images. We're, we're trying to find very specific um, reasons for problems which exist in a person and methods to treat them from a whole range of possible techniques. So it's not we're running around the field looking for something. We have to do this, and we have to do this, and we have to do this. Yeah. It works. It's very structured. But yes, that's different. You, you, no, you're I, to for me something. it's not different. I'm I'm hearing the same thing. But maybe then I explain how I look to it, because what causes the 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 sickness that's important. And then I say, like different people say, old people say, we are just energy with uh, information and with a piece of intelligence. So 
If you take, for example, dirty water, there's a formula, an output. But I go back first. What is it when we look through? N matter doesn't exist. It's energy, it's intelligence, and information. If we have the right information in this system, we are not sick. If we have the wrong information, you have the wrong energy, we get sick. So we must look what is this is also energy, information, and intelligence. A painting is only information, energy, and intelligence. So if we look around, I do hope we can measure, measure in future the energy, the output from it. Because now we look to the dirty water, but, but what is the output from this? And what is the output from that painting? Or from the, the whole world is just, the whole world is one thought. There's a question in... It's one thought. Have so you, have you that are it? thoughts. Thoughts coming up to me. I can make you sick with my thoughts. You can heal me with your thoughts. But this is also a thought. The whole, the whole, the, the whole world is not matter, it is soul. So what is soul? Well, that is the field from Sheldrake. That is energy, that. So we have, with different words, exactly feeling or, or working on the same thing. I do not feel any distance. Well, there's a question. Have you heard of James Joyce? No, I, I never heard about a lot of people, but well, please James tell me. James Joyce is, is a very, very oh, famous, yeah, 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 yeah. famous writer. James yeah, Joyce, yes. And in, in the book, A Portrait of the Artist as a Young Man, yeah. he asks a question. If a man attacks a large piece of wood, a block of wood, yeah. with an axe, and in doing so, in fury, he creates a perfect sculpture of a horse, can it be considered art? You understand the question? Yeah, um, that is a question. What do you consider about art? I think art is not the information we are creating by intellectual mind or even by uh, lower kinds of awareness. I think art, and that is also the responsibility of being an artist, that is that we try to come into connection with the field where we came from and where, where we are going to. So, if you create something, I do not believe it is art if you take an axe. It is the awareness with, with um, how you take it. So, if you are in a creative mind, you Using yeah, the X, listen to the, question. the input comes there. Yeah, but listen to the question. If a man takes an axe yeah. in anger no. to a piece of wood, it is a no, block of no wood, art. And makes a beautiful. Yeah. No, it it's is not, not art. It is not beautiful because okay. you're looking to the outside, and what we have to learn now that is the output of energy and the inside. Okay, and now that let me change the question around. I, I bring you to this beautiful sculpture. Yeah. It's created by the crazy yeah. man with axe. Yeah. But you don't know that. Yes. And you I see the question. sculpture and you say, wow. <laughs> yeah, wonderful, you say. Wonderful. Huh? Yeah. But I don't believe it. Uh, because I think the only right way of really looking at art is a way we have to look uh, maybe in next century. Because it's the telepathic way of looking. So it it is it is my 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 paintings for example you have to look at it look at it because we take we have we need our eyes but mm. i always tell people please do not look at it i make big paintings because of what because you with your eyes even close you have to feel the output of energy coming over you and if you if you are sensitive you will feel it i my last exhibition all they started trembling there were a lot of people from panamatic paranormal world who are very sensitive they say oh well, the energy is coming out it's, it's, I feel that so I think it is 
in evolution that we are now able to look with our eyes, then we do not see the aggressive output from that fingerprint from the horse because we are looking only to the first uh, low way of looking to things, not looking through, not looking with inside, just looking to the outside form. And then you can have a say, hey, hello, how beautiful, and you don't know what uh, of energy will be in it. And I do hope, because I, I'm asking for it every time, I do hope within 25 years, maybe you're the right man, that we can measure it and say, hey, hello, from the outside form, this is a beautiful horse, but know what you are buying and putting in your room. Because when we measure it, we find all the aggressive and, and things like that. And I do hope the instruments will come to measure that. Oh, someone already did that. So they measured already some kind of energy output from paintings, but yeah. I can't remember who it was. Yeah, this has already been done. I know that, that they... But, but you know, they took paintings by Rembrandt and Picasso yeah. and they, they... Would you like to say anything, by the way? Go on. Yes, Just think, because you're here. Oh. Um, Move up a little bit. Maybe you should just say hello. Hi. Say hello. I'm Peter. This is just the first time you've been on television, or...? Today. Today. <laughs> Today. <laughs> oh, mamma mia. Um, I can relate to what both of you are saying. Um, I can relate to the whole energy thing. I mean, what, what, what you're both saying, in effect, is that the human body works best when the energy flow distributes the blood and the oxygen and all of the nutrients in its maximum way. And the prana. And uh, that's, that's, I mean, that's, that's, that's the history of, of Eastern spiritual thought. And I can deal with that. Now, what I try to do is to grow out from that. And when Luke originally talked about Gaia... What's your main line of work, first of all, just for the... Okay, uh, I... Um, I started out in film and uh, worked in film for 20 years and then um, in the late 70s uh, I got involved with video because you see the medium itself is not important to me. What's important to me is communication. Um, what this is all about, what you're talking is all about, is, is communication and whether it's internal communication, whether it's external communication. I feel that what a human being is, is a vehicle for communication. If you look at the, uh, the development of civilization from the wheel to microelectronics, and you talk about the technological development going from the wheel to the printing press to the film camera to, to microelectronics, you talk about the development of communication. Um, it's, a, it's a straight line. Well, can I ask you a question yeah. in that context? When Marshall McLuhan said the medium is the message, what did he mean? And was he correct? One of the experiments that went on just at the time he was dying and then was followed by his, his group for the next year, year and a half, was that this was the time of the atomic bomb scare. Um, and more and more tension was rising with the Soviet Union and China. All of a sudden, China got the bomb. And what McLuhan said at that point was, instead of hiding the fact that China has the bomb, because that's what they were trying to do. They were trying to hide from the people, because the people, they were afraid, would um, panic, etc., etc. What McLuhan said is, scare the hell out of the people. Just, just put fear into every single human being on this planet about the bomb. And at that point, you will start seeing a genetic change 
Because what happens is that when the body feels fear over a long enough period of time, it will organically begin to adapt to the new conditions. And what, what McLuhan was doing at the time of his death is very similar to where I am right now. And that is trying to relate human beings and the nature of communication. The medium is only a vehicle for communication. I mean, whether it's the printing press, whether it's radio, whether it's film, whether it's video, whether it's digital, it doesn't make a difference. They're just little stops along the way. What we're talking about is how people communicate with people. And in the environment that we're in, which is a global environment that has been very kind to us for the last 10,000 years, and we've spread ourselves and spread ourselves and spread ourselves until we finally are threatening the environment, uh, the development has come because of communication. And if we are going to solve the problems, we have to develop new awarenesses of what communication does to the human being and how this human communication relationship relates to the environment. Now, what I mean by that is, um, and this is where it's, it, 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 I've, I've just come to this in the last two or three weeks actually. Um, Yes, I believe that the globe is a system, a living system. I mean, it can't be anything else. I mean, when you talk about all of the, the millions of different elements that are created on this planet and they all have to interact with each other. I mean, the clouds don't do it independently without any conscious or anything like that. It's all a living system that produced life and we come from that. How can we possibly say the globe is not a living system when we came from the globe and we are alive and the globe supports us? You can't say that, you know, we're alive and the globe is dead. So there, that's the relationship. So what I am trying to do right now is relate how human communication can recognize a new kind of communication. Now, what I mean by that is that when we think of alien life, we expect these little people with legs and arms, you know, to speak languages or with seti to send back beeps that we understand and all that kind of thing. It's, it doesn't work like that. Um, there is life in the universe in the sense that we are, as a globe, alive. Um, and there is communication in the universe. Now, I... How do you know that? Because the clouds don't do it by themselves. No, but we if, say a physicist would come along and say that there are very... or climatologists, there are very clear things which happen to produce right. clouds. Right, why? Clouds. Why? When I don't, I don't mean why in the sense that we well, got there's a, heat we, and there's you know, right. There, there is a relationship. There is a relationship. Yeah. Now, a physicist might say that is not a living relationship. I believe that since we are alive, all of those elements that create our environment have a life. It's a living organ or organism. Now, I, I just want to get to the, the point of this. So what I've been trying to do is, because see, the way it works right now is, if we don't solve the planet's problems in the next hundred years, forget it. Now, we are not going to do it. Human beings will not solve the environmental problems because they don't have to. The only way that they will solve the planetary problems is if they have to. If they are forced to do it. If it's not a matter of a choice for you, it's a matter, if you don't do it, 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 the Atlantic conveyor is going to stop and everything's going to freeze. Simple as that. You know, right now, they don't believe it in Detroit. They still put out the cars and this and that and the other thing because it's like, it's like cigarettes and cancer. Nobody can prove it. At a certain point, bump, they start saying, yes, 30 years down the line. You can't do that. You can't do that with the environment. You know, decide at the last minute, okay, we're going to be wiped out and we got to start changing our, our habits. So the only way that this is going to happen is if the environment itself lays enough communication on us. What does that mean exactly? Okay, what does that mean exactly? What I'm trying to get at here 
is that I am trying to relate, I am trying to find a way of communication with what would be considered non-traditional forms of communication and also non-traditional things, quote unquote, that you would communicate with, i.e. the planet, etc., etc., etc. So now you would say, how is that possible? Because it can't talk, it's not conscious, it doesn't have a telephone or anything like that. Yes. So then what I do is I tried to find a common denominator between communication, the universe, and human beings. And I found that in mathematics. Okay. Now, once I got to that point, because mathematics, you can... You can Are you a mathematician? I mean, I, I, I was in physics in, in, in school. I'm not a, a pure mathematician, but I, I graduated in physics. Um, but it goes beyond that. It's, it's, I, I really want to break through those, those lines. I want to break through the wall. Although mathematics, contemporary mathematics, is one of the most liberal. I mean, this whole school of mathematical philosophy that's going on, and, and the, 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 there's a, been a tremendous movement in the last... Uh, 15 years to to push mathematics past the normal bounds of mathematics, um, which is basically moving out of quantifying into philosophy. Basically, now where this comes full circle is there is a way that is very measurable that has been happening for the last 5,000 years. It's called music. Music comes from inspiration and it is presented in mathematical terms. Now, uh, what I am trying to do for the first time now is to try to figure out a relationship between mathematics, the universe, and human beings so that certain things can be, when you say measured, that's also translation. When you say measured, you're talking about translation. You're talking about, when you say about measured, you're talking about a language that you can understand. Isn't yeah. this called Kabbalah? Numerological studies of uh, that relationship. And that's been going on for some hundreds of years. No, it's not. No. I mean, no? that's ridiculous. I mean, you're, you're, pigeoning whole, you're pigeonholing one particular element. I'm, I'm going way the hell beyond this. So, so explain to us. Tell us. What I'm trying to say is that for example, what is Y2K? To me... Well, no, in two weeks. To me... No, 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 no. It's, it's Y2K is the first time that our digital reality has created a situation which forces the globe. And this is what I said. They won't do it by themselves. People will not do it by themselves. It's a system that is forcing the people to work together on the planet more than they have ever worked together on the planet before. Every single corner of this planet at this point in time is concerned about the exact same thing. They are working, the, Uni the United States and Russia have this thing in Colorado where they've been working on it for a long time. Yeah, there's, there's a... There's a They've been, they've been working right now for the last six months on this. The, in Colorado, there's a special thing with the, with the, the Department of Defense in the, in, uh, of the United States and the Department and uh, the Soviet Ministry of Defense have been working on coordinating Y2 activities for the last six months. Um, all over the world right now, people are being forced by the system itself to work together, to come together, in a way that's never happened before. Now, what, what, what Y2K is to me is the fact that we have a living system which we have been interact. Where do we get technology from? Where the hell does microelectronics come from? We don't pull it out of our pocket. I we have to explore the, the, spacecraft that, that we explore the universe. We explore the universe. We have learned laws about the universe. We take those laws and we put them into our cultures. And we expect by putting that into our cultures, we've completely controlled them, we completely predict what they will do, even though they're, they're universal laws which go 
far, far, far beyond our comprehension. That's the whole thing with the degradation of the environment. We knock out, you know, 35,000 species because we don't realize that each one of these tiny little subtle influences influences the whole. And in the same way, we have taken the physical reality of the universe, incorporated into our systems, and assumed that, you know, we can do whatever we want and we'll be able to control it. Now, what happens is that once we created this entire, I mean, it's, it's, it's an evolutionary process. It's not like we just did it overnight. I mean, it started with the wheel and it went to, to the whole thing, and then microelectronics was the next natural thing. Because again, it's an evolutionary system. It's a straight line between the wheel and microelectronics. Okay, so then we, we, we developed microelectronics, and what we see right now is that the entire digital system, which is this whole speed and, and, and the, the constant change and all that, is putting tremendous stress on our traditional ways of living. Now, what is putting tremendous stress? What is this technological? What is this digital revolution? What is this constant connecting with people? What is this huge inter, you know, active kind of environment right now? Are, are we creating? We're part of it. But nobody can control it at this point. This is a system. It's a system which is coming out of a living environment in which right now is beginning to influence everybody because that's the whole definition of the digital reality in which more and more people will be able to connect with more and more people and, and communicate with each other for the better of the whole. Yeah, as yeah. an artist, uh, do, you, do you use digital I'm, uh, technology? I'm, I'm, I'm very close to that. Uh, I'm uh, very happy with your words. I think uh, I already men mentioned it. Uh, I, I, studied nothing so f for me knowledge is just coming what my own thoughts were I do not read even books or something but I see the same thing like you I think you tell us there is a living system I agree with that because definition is always for me energy information and intelligence and that's living then I see that by that living system, we are all, we think we do it ourselves, but we are forced to communicate in a new way, but so wonderful because you can reach every point, we can use everything. So I think uh, communication, but then also with the awareness that, that we push it a little bit. So that was my meaning by we have to take the the, the 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 mobile phone or or the the electronic things to this tribe and the chiefs are intelligent enough to talk about this living system and they can teach us about it and we can hear them and and so we must set up not only an email network but it is network between people who are really doing the same job then we, we i think the system grows in a direction that we can be positive, I think. But but I heard also from the tribes what you tell me as a mathematicist, we have not so many much time because the the first signs are already there and we must but I, I, I believe that now I understand my own title from years ago that maybe we will die but Mother Earth not because it is a living system and they have angels and she will survive no. but but when we will be there want to be there in future we must understand the message coming to us so it's a whole different system it's exactly what i see what you you okay. tell it with different words well i'm in the picture again now <laughs> nick i, I the took birthday the birthday boy <laughs> the birthday boy but um, both of you talked about one way you talk about digital art and video and the communication pattern. You and the other way digital because you use your fingers, you know, digits are fingers. So there is a thing there. But the next person we're going to talk with is um, Nick Herbert and we're going to talk about quantum physics. Because all this Absolutely. means nothing if we don't really understand what's happening. Yeah. Yep. So that's our next guest. <laughs>